let me discuss the next group of antihypertensives that is calcium channel blockers. Now, if you take the types of calcium channels, right? So, firstly, if you see the types of calcium channels, the types of calcium channels they include. P type, L type and as well as N type. Alright, so the word P stands for Purkinje type, the word L stands for long lasting type, the word N stands for neural type. Now, these particular calcium channel blockers which are used as antihypertensives, they mainly they block the L type of calcium channels. Alright. The calcium channel blockers which are being used as antihypertensives, they mainly block L type of voltage gated calcium channels. This L type of voltage gated calcium channels, where are they present? They are present in the blood vessels. Right, they are present in the blood vessels and as well as heart. Right, and as well as heart. Now, Accordingly, like we have three groups of calcium channel blockers. These three groups of calcium channel blockers, they include phenylalkylamines. The second group include dihydropyridines. And the third group includes benzothiazepines. Now, if you take phenylalkylamines, the examples include verapamil and as well as norverapamil. Next, if you take benzothiazepines, the example of this benzothiazepines is diltiazem. And you take dihydropyridine type of the calcium channel blockers. And the examples of dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers include nifedipine, nicardipine, and then nisoldipine, nitrendipine, isradipine, then we have lacidipine phallodipine and then amlodipine. So, these are the dihydropyridine type of the calcium channel blockers. Now, now what these particular calcium channel blockers they will do is, they will inhibit the calcium channels. So, thereby what these agents will do, right? These agents will decrease the frequency of opening the calcium channels. So, once this particular calcium channels, L type of calcium channels, which are present within the blood vessels and as well as within the heart. Once these channels they are blocked, what will happen is there will be decrease in the frequency. Right? There will be decrease in the frequency of opening of calcium channels. Now once there is decrease in the frequency of the opening of the calcium channels, the calcium will not enter into the tunica media which is present within the vessel wall. So, once there is decrease in the frequency of opening of the calcium channels, that will lead to decreased entry of the calcium into the tunica media of the vessel wall and thereby that will lead to what is called as relaxation of smooth muscle which is present within the tunica media right that will lead to relaxation of the smooth muscle which is present within the tunica media of the vessel wall and this will lead to vasodilatation right this will lead to vasodilatation now this activity is in the blood vessel so by blocking the l type of calcium channels in the blood vessel, the ultimate effect is vasodilatation. And whereas, if you see on the heart, what they will do is, by blocking the L type of calcium channels which is present in the heart, there will be decreased activity of the heart. Right, there will be decreased activity of the heart. 
Now, because of decreased activity of the heart, there is decrease in the heart rate of the individual, there is decrease in the atrioventricular conduction, alright, there is decrease in the atrioventricular conduction and there is also decrease in the contractility of the heart. Right, there is also decrease in the contractility of the heart. So, this is the ultimate effect of the calcium channel blockers on the blood vessels and as well as on the heart. On the blood vessels, they are causing vasodilatation. Whereas on the heart, they are decreasing the heart rate, they are decreasing the AV conduction and they are also decreasing the contractility of the heart. Now, now we have discussed there are three types of calcium channel blockers that is dihydropyridines, benzothiazepines and as well as phenylalkylamines. Now out of these three particular groups you take the dihydropyridines. Dihydropyridine group of this calcium channel blockers they have very little direct cardiac activity right. So if you take the dihydropyridine type of calcium channel blockers if you take their effect over the heart and as well as the effect over the blood vessel. The effect over the heart is very minimal, right? The effect over the heart is very minimal, whereas they mainly act on the blood vessels, right? Whereas they mainly act on the blood vessels. Now, you see here, because they are mainly acting on the blood vessels, these dihydropyridine type of calcium channel blockers they are therefore called as peripherally acting calcium channel blockers all right so because they are mainly acting on the blood vessels they are called as peripherally acting calcium channel blockers all right now so this is about your the dihydropyridine type of calcium channel blockers whereas you take your benzodiazepine as well as phenylalkylamines what is that examples we have discussed about we have discussed verapamil and as well as the diltiazem if you take the verapamil and as well as diltiazem so if you take the verapamil and as well as diltiazem these two particular drugs they have a very strong right they have a very strong direct cardiodepressant activity right they have very strong direct cardiodepressant activity now among these two again between verapamil and as well as diltiazem which is the calcium channel blocker which is having a direct cardiodepressant activity more is your verapamil more than diltiazem. So remember this is a very very important point verapamil it is having a very stronger direct cardiodepressant activity compared to that of diltiazem.